Hello, I'd like to welcome you to this book of James. Uh, James is considered to be the brother of the Lord. It doesn't actually say that here in this uh, book, but uh, Josephus, or I'm sorry, Eusebius, uh, tells us that James was surnamed the Just on account of his eminent virtue, and he was considered to be the writer, the brother of the Lord, to be the writer of this book. <clears throat> James was a uh, one of the pillars of the church after the resurrection of Jesus, but during the life of Jesus, apparently from different uh, places in uh, the Bible, Matthew 13, 55, and uh, Mark 6, 3, that, that James and his brothers were not, didn't believe in, Jesus of who he was, skeptics. And the book begins, I'll read the Greek, and again the yellow is words that are found in the English derivatives, of the Greek New Testament, and the blue are, in this case, are the genitive. In the past we've had the nominative, and then we had the accusative, and then we had the nominative and accusative, neuter, singular and plural, the ta, the to and the ta, which are the same. Now we're going into the accusative, and the accusative uh, is two, tis, and two in the singular, the masculine and feminine neuter, and tone, t, a ta, omega, ni, in the plural on all three. Uh, masculine, feminine, neuter. So uh, there's only actually three forms, the two, tis, and tone. The two being the masculine and the neuter genitive. It's the uh, article of possession generally. <clears throat> and sometimes it could be an article, uh, it could be a um, article with prepositions of separation, like apo and para. We'll get to a lot of this more when we get into the prepositions, and uh, we will uh, explain that more then. So it begins here, Iakovos, that's uh, James, the Jacobites were the uh, people that followed King James in England. And uh, Iakovos, I went to a school called St. Jacobi. It's a Lutheran school when I was a child. It was German as Jacobi, Iakovos. Theu ke kiriu e su Christu, thulos. Tes dodica phileis, tes en ti diaspora hyrene. James, one bondman of God and the Lord e su Christu. Theu, theology, and kiriu, the kirialeison. And uh, James is now, he's a bond man, uh, almost in some places it could be a slave. To, uh, and he's writing, to the twelve tribes, the phileis, teis dodica phileis, so we have a phylum uh, as a classification. And uh, tribes is the English, Greek word, to the ones in the uh, diaspora, the the, the diaspora, the direct transliteration into the English, the Jews that were spread out throughout uh, the Mediterranean world. It could also be to the ones in the dispersion in Christ that have left because of different types of persecutions that were going on. And he says, Hail. One, two. Pas in Haran, he gives us they. Adelphi mu, oten pirasmis, piri pesite, pikilis. Esteem it all joy, my brethren. Adelphi, we have the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Adelphi. Whenever you should fall into various tests. I should have highlighted this uh, word, pirasmis, test, because uh, we have a word in the word pamphlet on tests. And it's an interesting word. Uh, pirazo is the verb, and pira is an attempt, and pirazmos is a test. And here it's uh, tests, plural. Uh, 
And this brochure goes through and uh, explains a lot about uh, tests and testing. And uh, it's a word that is, to me, is one of the most important to understand for uh, our existing in the human sphere because uh, it's uh, testing is uh, something where it seems like we're uh, it's occurring constantly it seems like we're in a nothing but a giant test and it uh, brochure starts off with testing in general David tests his weapons the Queen of Sheba tests Solomon the ecclesiastic tests his heart and also to attempt Saul attempted to join the his disciples. He didn't test them, but he attempted. So this is all the testing in general. And the reasons for testing it mentions by uh, fearing God to not sin. And Moses says to them, be of courage, because God came to you to test you, so that there might be the fear of him in you, that you should not sin. It's to determine our heart. And you shall remember the whole journey which the Lord your God led you this 40th year in the wilderness, how he should afflict you and should test you and should determine the things in your heart, if you shall guard his commandments or not. And then to determine if we love the Lord. For the Lord your God tests you to know if you love the Lord your God from your entire heart and from your entire soul. There are people that have asked for tests and then there are those that ask not for tests, don't ask for tests. Uh, David asked to be tested, try me, O Lord, and test me. Set on fire the kidneys of my heart. Uh, Ahaz the king refuses to test the Lord, in Isaiah 7, 12. The one in, before was Psalms 26, 2. In the Lord's Prayer it says, And do not insert us for a test, but rescue us from the wicked one. And that's in Matthew 6, 13. Matthew 26, 41, uh, Be vigilant and pray that you should not enter into a test, for the spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. But then Paul says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, Test yourselves if you are in the belief. Try yourselves. Are you, do you not recognize yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be rejected? And then in Genesis 6, 1, Brethren, if even a man should be taken first in some transgression, you the spiritual ones ready such in spirit of gentleness, watching yourself, lest also you should be tested. There are conditions of testing. Uh, it's not about not above what one is able, it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. A test is not taken, you except what belongs to a human. But God is trustworthy who will not allow you to be tested above what you are able, but will make with the test also the way out or the result for you to be able to endure. Then it says in, uh, right here, and we'll go down into uh, a little bit later about uh, testing is evil, but God does not test from evils. Uh, there's a time of a test, and the ones upon the rock, the ones whenever they hear, with joy they receive the word, and these have no root, which for a time believe, and in time of test they leave. Luke 8, 13. Testing purifies us. Blessed is the man who endures a test, for becoming unadulterated he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to the ones loving him. That's, we'll get down to that in verse 12. It proves our belief in 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7, in which you exalt a little just now, if it is necessary, being fretted by various tests, that the proving of the belief of your much more esteemed than gold that precious, even being tried through fire, should be found in high praise and glory and honor in revelation of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, there was a place called Test, where the Jews tested God, Exodus 17.2, Deuteronomy 6.16, Deuteronomy 9.22, and Deuteronomy 33.8. Many people were tested by God. Abraham was tested in Genesis 22.1. And it came to pass after these words, God tested Abraham. Moses in Exodus 15.25 says, There he established with him ordinances and judgments, and there he tested him. The sons of Israel were tested. Hezekiah the king was tested. Philip, 
the evangelist, uh, but this is he, Jesus, and said, testing him, that is Philip, for he knew what he was about to do. Paul was tested, Acts 20, 19, serving to the Lord with all humility and many tears and tests of the ones coming to pass to me in the plots of the Jews. Uh, believers were tested. Uh, the Hall of Fame, as they're called, the, they were stoned, were sawn, were tested. They died by murder of the sword. Ones wanting to be rich uh, are going through a test. And then there's people that uh, are testing God. The sons of Israel tested God in Numbers 14.22 and other places. The Pharisees and Sadducees tested Jesus. The Herodians came and tested Jesus. A legal expert tested him. Ananias and Sapphira tested God. And believing Pharisees tested in Acts 15.10. It's all in this brochure. And then people uh, tested, uh, were tested by others, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel 1, 12, and 14. Test now indeed your servants ten days, and let her be given to us from food of the seeds of the earth. And he hearkened to them, and he tested them ten days. The test, the one who does the testing, is Satan, the devil. 1 Corinthians 7, 5, it mentions about depriving one another except for harmony's sake for a time, that you should relax in the fasting and in the prayer. And again, at the same time, uh, same time you should come together that Satan should not test you. Luke 4, 13, and the devil having completed all the tests, left him until an occasion. And then Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tested by the devil. And having come forth to him, the one testing said, If you are son of God, speak that these stones should become bread loaves. Matthew 4, 1 and 3, and other places. Then Jesus was tested. It, uh, they tested me, they derided me and sneering, they gnashed against me with their teeth. Psalms 35, 16, where the writer's talking about someone else, and I believe it's Jesus. And then in 1 Corinthians it said, Neither should we put to test the Christ, as also some of them tested, and by the serpents perished. Matthew 4, 1 and 3, Then Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tested by the devil. And Luke 22, 28, But you are the ones abiding with me in my tests. And so these tests uh, happen to everyone. Uh, I highly recommend that little brochure. We'll be putting it up shortly online so you can download it. 1-3, it continues. Gnoskon tes otito dokimon imon tis pisteos katergazate ipomoni. And uh, so esteem it, see, uh, esteem it all joy whenever you should follow these tests, knowing that the proving of the belief of yours manufactures endurance. So these tests, if we pass the test, well, I suppose even if we don't pass the test, it helps uh, us realize or try to become better the second time, hopefully, in manufacturing uh, endurance. That uh, I don't think we're going to be tested if we uh, are going through these tests without failing, why would God do keep testing us if it was proven uh, that our whatever it was was uh, true? Then I don't think God would test us for just no reason because he enjoys testing people. But uh, that's my thoughts. E the ipomoni ergon telion eketo ina iti telii ke olokliri and mi theni lipomeni and let endurance have its perfect work, ergon, ergonomics. So this uh, test proves the belief manufactures our endurance, and the uh, endurance, uh, let it have its perfect work, let it go to the fullest. That you should be perfect and entire, uh, with nothing missing or in nothing missing, not missing anything. We should be perfect. And Ive tis imon lipite sophias aitito paratu de dontos theu pas and aplos ke me oni these ontos ke do thesite afto. And if any of you miss sophias, sophia, uh, philosophy, wisdom, let him ask of the uh, giving God of the and that's uh, para and to as a genitive of the giving God, the
the God that gives, theu, theology, to all simply and not berating. Ask simply and not uh, demanding, berating, and it shall be given to him. I tito they in pisti me then the acrinomenos, o gar the acrinomenos, e ke clidon thalasan, ane mi zomeno ke ripi zomeno. But let him ask in belief, scrutinizing nothing. Uh, for the one scrutinizing is like a swell of the sea, thalasa, being driven by the wind and being blown about. Uh, the scrutinizing, uh, it's, a, it's difficult to, for me to understand exactly what it's talking about right down, down here, but it goes into verse 9 about uh, the opposite sort of is the humbleness in your asking and in belief and humbleness asking, not uh, in scrutinizing so much of what you want, how you want it, and uh, what it's got to be like, and to detail but in humbleness asking that God would grant us um, the things that he would grant us. In one seven it continues, Migar ESO ESTHO O ANTHROPOS AKINOS OTI LIPSITETI PARATU THEU KIRIU For let not three uh, for that five man imagine that he shall receive anything from the Lord, the anthropos, anthropology, uh, kiriu. So if a person is demanding, he better realize that he may not be receiving anything. It's not going to get him anywhere. One eight anir zipsikos, akatastatos in pases tes o these have too. Vipsikos, we have uh, V is uh, uh, these two, and uh, dichotomy, a division of two parts, a diode, two terminal conductor, and psychos is uh, it's the psyche, minded, double minded, two minded, confused in all his O oh, these, his ways, the O oh, those, uh, cathode, the derivative of the electron uh, current. Kafkas though they o adelphos o tapinos into ipsi of two one but two let three the four humble five brother boast in his stature the uh, basically the let him boast in his stature of humbleness and uh, it's kind of a little play on words right there and one ten o they pelusios in t Tapinosi of two, otios anthos hortu paralevsete, and the rich in his humiliation. Uh, so the rich uh, boast in his humiliation that he make basically make yourself low, and the person that is humble uh, be humble. For as the anthos, we have a uh, derivative, uh, antho is a prefix meaning flower, anthodium, the flower head of a composite plant. And anthos is also a suffix meaning flower. Amaranth, an imaginary undying flower. Anthology, originally it was a flower gathering and came into words. Uh, for as the anthos, hortu, grass, hortos, uh, we have horticulture. Uh, doing the cultivation of a garden. Uh, for as the flower of grass, he pass, he will pass away. Verse 11. Aneti legar o ilios sin to kavsoni, ke exirane ton horton, ke to anthos of tu exepese, ke e prepia tu prosopu of tu apolito, Utoke o pelusios in tes porias of tu maranthisate. For the helios, uh, helium is a derivative, rose with the burning wind. Um, for the sun rose with the burning wind, and it dried the hortone, the grass. And the anthos, its anthos fell, and the beauty of its countenance perished. So also the rich one in his goings shall wither, and it talks about the test and how hard it is for the uh, 
the rich man to uh, they are they are tested the person that's wanting to be rich but the ones wanting to be rich they shall fall into a test and a snare and many unthinking and hurtful desires which submerge the men into ruin and instru- destruction first timothy 6 9 and then the opposite in 112, Makario sanir os hypomeni pirasmon, oti dokimos gegnomenos, lipsite ton stephanon ti zoes on epingilato o kyrios tis agaposin afton. Makarios, a Greek person told me it's a very difficult to, word to translate in English. It's happy or blessed. Something in there that's uh, a blessedness is a man who endures the test. If you endure it and you go through it, not failing, of course, but we do fail, unfortunately. When you're blessed if you endure it. Uh, I know I go through tests and I, things that pull me away f- uh, from what I should be doing to go into sin and, and I fail and I feel miserable. But then when I go through it and I, in, and I don't go and I go through the test and I endure it and I don't do it, afterwards I feel wonderful and it's a, it's a wonderful feeling and uh, it's, um, it's an interesting phenomenon that we all go through because it says that uh, every man will be tested. Uh, for becoming unadulterated, he will sh- he shall receive the crown of life. This is <clears throat> uh, becoming unadulterated. I don't see that happening on this earth, uh, but it mentions in Revelation about this uh, receiving this crown of life. Uh, uh, it's not chronos. Uh, chronos is a different type of crown. This is a stephanon. It's like the laurel wreath of victory of life. The st- and Stephen is a Deriv- English derivative for that word, Stephanon. Uh, zoe is life. I mean, Zoo is a uh, derivative, which the Lord promised to the ones, agaposin, the love, agapi, to be in the derivative, the ones loving him, loving God. Uh, if we don't really love God, a lot of people don't. They may be following God. You out there may be following God. Really not loving him, not really uh, wanting him. Uh, just doing it because you're making another person happy or you feel like you should or you've been trained to do this. But loving God is, uh, I, I suppose either you, you love him or you don't. I suppose you can fall in love with God. Uh, I did. I didn't love him for a long time in my life. I rejected him. Uh, even though I knew who he was, I wanted to sin and do my own thing. But then when I came back, uh, the Lord had his arms open for me, and I came back to him, and I realized uh, all the things that, uh, how much he loves me. And that caused me to love him, I suppose. Uh, so when someone really loves you, it's, uh, it's pretty hard not to love them. You, uh, I, there are people that do that. You hear of marriages falling apart. One person will really love the other person. The other person just doesn't love them. And uh, God has done everything he could uh, for us to love him. But we have to see the things that he does, that he's done through his word. And that's what we're doing right now, going through his word. And uh, hopefully when you read these things, that your love for him will grow stronger than mine. 113. Me this, pirazomenos, legato, oti apotheu, pirazome, o gartheos, apirastos esti kakon. Let no one being tested, there's that pirazo verb, uh, say that uh, I am tested from God. The pirazo may, I am tested, apo theu, from God. For God, theos, is beyond testing by evils. That doesn't say he doesn't test. There's many places he does test. But by evils, there's a fine line because uh, the evils... And who's doing the testing? God's testing is for us to become unadulterated. But uh, Satan's testing is for us to become adulterated, to be completely worthless. So we're being tested uh, in different ways uh, by God and by the evil one. And it continues, pirazi, and tests. Uh, Three is tests. So we'll go to the next column. And he himself... And he himself tests no one, aftos udena, 
114. So God doesn't touch any test anyone with evils. <coughs> but each is tested by his own desire, being dragged away and being entrapped. Ekastos de pirazate ipo tis idias epithemias exel komenos ke the leazomenos the um, feminine genitive here singular but each is tested by his own desires of his own desire something that's of himself being dragged away and being entrapped so it's not always something that Satan has done it's sometimes it's our own uh, desire that's in within our body that is uh, pulling us away 115 ita i epithemia Silavusa tikti amartian ide uh, amartian ide amartia apo telesthesa apo ki thanaton. So then, the desire, the epithemia, having conceived, giving birth, that is, it gives birth to what? Sin, amartian. Uh, uh, but sin continues, and this going further. Being perpetrated engenders thanatone. It can engender death. So that's the end of uh, sin. Thanatology, it was a study of uh, things of the dead and mortuary science. Verse 16, Me planaste adelphi mu agapiti. Do not be misled, my beloved agapiti, the agapi, uh, adelphi, brethren, so Adelphi, the city of brotherly love. Do not be misled. Pasa dosis agathi ke pan dorima teleon anothen esti katavainon apotu patros ton photon par o uk eni para lagi e tropis aposkiasma. Do not, and so every, do not be misled, every good portion, a dose. Dosis, a dose, and maybe I should have highlighted that one, a portion, a dose. And every perfect gift is from anothen. Uh, anothen is a word that appears, uh, it means from above. And we will, it's an, I want to read you something. So in, in the Greek you can see there's a big difference than what the English has in some Bibles. And John 3.3, 3, Jesus responded and said to him, to Nicodemus, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one should be born anothen from above, he is not able to behold the kingdom of God. In this particular place, it doesn't say, it doesn't mean born again. Although Nicodemus brings that subject up, how is a man able to be born again if he's old? But the word itself doesn't mean, again, it's really from above. Uh, coming down from the patros, uh, father, paternal, the father of the photo, the lights, the photon, we have the English derivative, of whom there is no alteration or shaded circuit. Uh, there's no dimmer switch when it comes to the light of God. We have no control over the light. He is light. Verse 118. Vulithis apekisen imas logo alithias isto ine imas aparkin tina ton aftu katismaton. Willingly he engendered us by word of truth. The logo. The logos, the word, for us being certain first fruits of the ones of his creation. We are engendered by the word of truth. Uh, we are being, especially if you're born from above, then uh, that birth is engendered in us uh, by the word, and we have the word of God. And when you have the word of God, then that is the, the spirit taking uh, conform or conform, taking a form inside of uh, you or me and this word is something that we can 
go to all the time by opening up the Word and reading it and communicating with God. We have this communication. It's without having the Spirit, the Word is meaningless, and we're told in other places about that. It just sounds like gibberish. But all of a sudden, when we're engendered from above, it takes on a new meaning. Oste adelfi mu agapiti esto pas anthropos takis is to akuse vradis is to lalise vradis is orgin. So that, my beloved agapiti adelfi brethren, let every anthropos uh, be takis quick. We have a tachometer measures speed, velocity. Be every man be. Uh, quicken the hearing, Aku say, acoustics in hearing. Be quick in hearing. Listen hard. Listen uh, attentively. And slow in the speaking. And slow in orgine. You know, the orgy has to do with this. Uh, orgy in the, uh, in the Greek has a, this anger. That it's in uh, feeling of... Uh, not frustration, but uh, being uh, agitated. And uh, it goes into this uh, English word, orgy, of an agitation, a sexual connotation, but not in the Greek. Verse 20. Orgigar anthros dikiasini teu, u katergazate. For Man's andros, we have an android that has the form of a man. And man's right uh, for man's anger or gi four does not five manufacture dakiosini righteousness of God. Theu. Anger is not a righteousness of God. Doesn't manufacture the righteousness of God. Well, now I suppose if people are uh, get angry for the certain per points and certain purposes uh, that may not always be the, the, the fact, but I think he's talking about here and, uh, the, the anger in the bad sense. In verse 121 it continues, the o apothemony pasen riparian ke perician kakias and praetiti dexaste ton emphiton logon Tone the nominon so say tas psikas imon. Therefore, having put aside all filthiness and abundance of kakias, the kakas, evils or bad things, in gentleness, here in the little pronunciation uh, point where the uh, diarese is a double dot, so it wouldn't. It's not prav tt, but pra e tt. Uh, they're separated because the diarese is above the epsilon. In gentleness, receive the implanted logon, the implanted word, the one uh, denominon, dynamite, powerful, able to deliver your souls, the psikas, psyche. Uh, so uh, receive the implanted the word. This is what we are reading right now. We are receiving this in planted word. We are reading God's word. We're putting it into us, you and I. The one that's able to uh, deliver uh, uh, the your souls, the so say, save is uh, in King James, and I have deliver. The word is able uh, to deliver our souls. It's an interesting concept. I believe that when reading the word of God and doing the word of God, Constantly, if you're not really doing it, you're probably getting away from reading the Word. If you're not reading the Word of God, uh, it's a dangerous place because this is how God communicates with us and how we communicate with Him. Not why watching television evangelists or just uh, going to church and having a good time with other people and singing. But it's implanted in us, the Word. Just as uh, you're talking to your best friend and you're talking about things that really uh, interest you, it goes inside and it affects you. And this is what God's Word does, if it does. Verse 22. Genus they they, pi te logu, ke mi monon acroate, para logizomeni iavtus. But become piete, uh, poet, 
It's a derivative. 4160 is the verb. Become doers of the word. The logu. Become do it. So when you're reading these things, uh, I'm reading these things, uh, we need to do the things it says. Not always easy, is it? And not only monon, we have uh, mono is a prefix for one, single or alone, a monorail, monolith, monogamy. Not only listeners, uh, we don't want to just sit there and uh, listen to uh, people telling us uh, television or radio what we should or shouldn't be doing. I don't believe. I think it's uh, imperative to open the word and go become uh, and knowing it from Genesis all the way to Revelation to know the whole thing, not just to listen to subjective teachings that are uh, in many cases I call stuck records where some uh, ministers, preachers, pastors will just always have a favorite subject and they always talk about tongues or baptism or the Holy Spirit or uh, whatever it is they do over and over again they just uh, do this over and over again they're like a stuck record and I'm if you're old enough to know what a stuck record is maybe not because that's going back but these records will go around and the little needle would uh, be in the groove and it would play the music and then as it got old somehow the groove would get uh, torn and the record wouldn't go to the next groove it would stay in the same groove around and around and you'd hear the same thing over and over again. And this is what uh, many people hear from uh, churches today instead of going through the word. <clears throat> and you become misled and misleading yourselves because you allow your, if you're allowing it to happen then it's your fault really. 123 O-T-E-T-S Acroatis Logu S-D Kupitis utos eiken andri katanounti to prosopon tis genesios of two in esoptro. For if any is to a hearer, an acroatis, of the word, if you hear the word, that's good, and not a doer, but you don't do the things, this one is like a man, andri, an android is a derivative, Contemplate, contemplating the face of his uh, creation, the genesios, genesis of his creation in a mirror. If his could be, I don't know, I didn't put body, but it's a, a, <clears throat> contemplating the face of his creation, of what he is in a mirror. You know yourself real well. You look at yourself in mirrors every day. We all do. But uh, it says in 24, Kata noi se gar yav ton ke apalili the ke ev theos epalatheto opios in. For he contemplated himself and he went forth and immediately forgot what he was like. So this is the danger of uh, the one just listening and not really uh, doing the things. Uh, that he needs to be done. If you look at yourself and you know you see yourself in the mirror and you need to shave or you need to put on your makeup or you need to do this or you need to do that, uh, then you do it instead of going forth and ignoring the things. It would be like reading the word and not doing what you need to do. 125, it continues. O they parakipsas is nomon teleon. Tontes eleftherias ke paramines utos uk acroatis epilis monis genomenos ala pietis ergu utos makarios inti piisi af tu este. But the one having leaned over into the perfect law. Uh, leaning over, taking the extra effort to look out the window and then bending down to see, not just to walk by the window and glance out, but leaning over to look what this law, what the Word has, uh, spending your time in the wonderful words of God that uh, can bring you through all the tests that, they, uh, that the evil one can bring, uh, and leaning over into the perfect gnomon, the law, the astronomy, nomi, the law, the one of the freedom, uh, and remained. This one is not becoming a forgetful listener, but a doer. Uh, the freedom that we have is not 
the same uh, is different than the freedom of the people in the Old Testament that John, James, James was writing to earlier. The diaspora the they had all these different um, Levitical uh, laws, uh, uh, mosaic laws that they had to do as far as washings and uh, all types of sacrifices, but they were free of it with the Christ. The perfect law of Christ, though, was a, a new law, a new covenant, and it was one of freedom. And so they had this freedom uh, and remaining. And this one is not, it says, becoming a forgetful listener, but a doer of work. And this is what God wants, is a, a doer, a poet, a poet of God, a poet of God's word and doer of his uh, word and of his work, ergu, ergonomics. This one shall be blessed, Makarios, happy, uh, Sermon on the Mount. Oh, Makarios, blessed, Makarios, over and over again. He shall be, this one shall be uh, blessed in his doing. And 126, uh, etis doki three skus ine and he mean, if anyone seems to be religious, three skos, you don't see this word very often. Religion is not a big, uh, it's not a word. It's Everybody asks me if I'm religious, and I tell them, no, I'm not religious. And so uh, the reason I say that is because it's really not mentioned hardly at all. And and we go, we'll go to the next page, and we'll, we'll, I'll show you why that I'm not religious. So if anyone seems to be religious among you, and not me. Halinagogon, uh, glosonov too, but not bridling his glosen, glossolalia, speaking the tongue, speaking, speaking languages. Not one well, not bridling his tongue, but deceiving his uh, cardian, the cardiac. Is a cardiac arrest because of heart. Of this one, religion is in vain. Well, my tongue does talk too much, that's for sure. But then in 127, three skia kathara ke amiantos parathetotheo ke patri avti estin episkeptiste orphanus ke hieras anti thalipsiaf tone. Aspilon iafton, tirin apotu kasmu. Religion, kathara, cathartic, this is a derivative. Pure religion and undefiled before theo, theology, God and patri, paternal, is this. To visit the orphanus, uh, orphan is a direct transliteration. And the widows, I don't deliver, I don't visit orphans and widows in their affliction. I don't see too many widows and orphans that I know that are in affliction today. It seems like the government's taken over everything. In the olden days, uh, we, without the government, the widows and the orphans were obvious because they didn't have anything to fall upon except for the good hearts of uh, their relatives or friends to help them. But today, the government seems to be taking this over until the government fails. Then maybe we'll have orphans and widows again. <clears throat> but uh, it's also to keep oneself spotless from the world, the cosmo, cosmo, cosmos is an English derivative, keeping one spotless from the world. I don't keep myself too spotless from the world either. I read about politics and watch the news and get all upset over politics and who am I going to vote for and <clears throat> things that people are doing and seeing all the problems of the world. I'm about as far as being spotless from the world as you can get, I think, unfortunately. Sometimes I think I'd like to just go out and uh, dump myself in the eastern desert in Oregon and live there and be away from all these things. But I'm here and I'm, that's where I'm at. But I, so, so I suppose I'm really not uh, religious. So this uh, first chapter of James, the brother of John, is, uh, is a fantastic uh, chapter to me because uh, it tells me, it gives me instructions that are uh, important in life as far as being uh, tested, that I am going to be tested and to 
stay in the word to get through it. And I thank God for this uh, chapter. And we will be going to the next chapter in our next seminar. We hope we will see you then. And God bless.